the word of Moses, I say, have mercy on all these other nations. Because it's not here in this Bible. It's nowhere in this Bible. As it says here, read. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. Most High will have mercy on Jacob. See, Jacob is the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. Read. And will yet choose Israel. And will yet choose Israel. Read. And set them in their own land. Set us in our own land. Read. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And these other nations going to be joined with us. Read. They shall cleave to the house of Jacob. They're going to be cleaving to the house of Jacob. House means family. Family of Jacob. You are the Israelites. Read. And the people shall take them. And bring them to their place. So we're going to take them and bring them to our place. Read. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Most High. For servants and handmaids. So that's just a change of the God. We are going to be the rulers. And they are going to be the servants and handmaids. Men slaves and women slaves. Where well, everybody a slave now anyway. Whether they realize it or not. <laughs> Go ahead. They shall take them captives whose captives they were so we're going to take them captives whose captives we were everybody we read this bible most of the time we in captivity on the egyptians the syrians the babylonians the ethiopians the persian the Medes, the east indians and the Japheti people covering everybody from the persian the Medes to the the greeks who are the so-called uh caucasian people Changing their name to the Romans. To where we at now? In captivity scattered all amongst all these nations. Amongst all these lands and so forth. Under who? Same Edomites. What about Caucasian people? You see? So you say we're gonna take them captives who captives we were. Me? They shall rule over their oppressors. So we're gonna rule over our oppressors. That's 144,000. 12,000 from each of the tribes of Israel. When you read Revelation the seventh chapter, the fourth verse down, it's 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel, which make up the 144,000 will be the ruling party with the Mashiach El Shai ruling on this earth forever and ever and ever. Read. Verse three. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Most High shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear. And from the hard bondage where thou wast made to serve. See, this, this is it right here. You're going to have a rest. You ain't going to never be sad no more. No more tears. The tear ducts that we have are going to be dried up. You ain't going to never cry no more. Ever again. No more tears. No more sorrow. No more sadness. Just joy and rejoicing. In the kingdom that's righteous. Remember said, all the most high's people are going to be what? Righteous. You see what I'm saying? That's what we're rehearsing right now, the righteous acts of the most high. Those that hear, us, hear on my second side voice is telling us how we got to operate in this world to be one of these 100, 144,000 or just to be one part of the one third. You see? But you work to be 144,000, you're going to work harder so that at least you got an opportunity to be one of the one third. You're going to be weak. Don't be weak-minded. You go off your course of trying to make it there, man. Right? Lamentations 422. That's it right here. That's it. That's all she wrote. Ain't no more captivity for us. They can say they're going to do this, that, and the third. It better coincide with what thus say the most high, as it is written. Everybody should be wanting to learn this truth. And what we bring it forth in these last days, that's the ministers and the, and the, the pastors of the most high. Read. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 22. Come. The punishment of our iniquity is accomplished. Read the punishment of our iniquity is over. It's accomplished, read. O daughter of Zion. O daughter of Zion. Zion represents who? Well, tribes of Israel. Can you prove it? No, you can prove it, can't you? Isaiah, come on, 51, 16. We go over this a lot. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 16. Huh. And I have put my words in my mouth. And he put his words in our mouth, read, in Isaiah's mouth, go ahead. And I have covered thee with the shadow of my hand, mm -hmm. 
and I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. Right, so Zion represents the most highest people, children of Israel. Go back to where you was at. Lamentation 4.22. Lamentation chapter 4 and verse 22. The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished. The punishment is accomplished, she's saying. Who? O daughter of Zion. We just seen that Zion represented the children of Israel. Right? You will no more be carry away, carry thee away into captivity. Yeah, because he says, Thou art my people. We proved who the most high people are in Exodus 3 and 10. Go ahead. He will visit thine iniquity. O daughter of Edom, he will discover thy sins. He's going to say he's going to never carry us away no more into captivity. When, when could this be? It can only be now. Not the time of Jeremiah. Even though he's crying to the Most High, who's in lamentation, meaning, you know, crying out to the Most High. It's not during this time because we hadn't went into captivity and the Persians and the Medes and the Greeks and so forth, you know, the Romans and so forth. Even when the Mashiach was trying to walk the earth, he still was in under the Romans. It was too far to earth. That's why he said he's going to visit the iniquity of daughter of Edom. So you look at 2nd Ezra 6 and 9, what does it say? That you know it's talking about now. He will discover their sins, the sins of the Edomites. Read that. 2nd Ezra chapter 6 and verse 9. Huh. For Esau is the end of the world. So then your Esau is what? The end of the world. Esau is the end of the world. See? Esau means, that's why I say you're going to visit the sins of the Edomites. Because why? Read it. What does it say? For? He will discover thy no. sin. No, no, no. He's going to visit the sins of the Edomites in 2nd Ezra 6 and 9. Read. Oh. For Esau is the end of the world. Right. See, Esau is the end of the world. That's why he's going to visit the iniquity of the Edomites and discover their sins because Esau is the end of the world. That's what he said. He gonna, we ain't going to captivity no more. This is the last captivity we got to serve because Esau is the end of the world. The Edomites will be ruling when? The end of the world. Read. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. That's what we just read in Isaiah 14, 1 to 3. Jacob is the forefather of the 12 child Israel, the beginning of it that follows. Forever and ever and ever. And that's what this is all about. Trying to make it to this kingdom that's promised to Israel. I mean, give Acts 1 and 6. That's what they say. Almost everyone trying to die, walk the earth for. Uh, he rose on the third day, walked here for 40 days. This is what they asked him. You've been here, hey man, you here 40 days. This is what they asked him. Acts 1 and 6. Look at Acts chapter 1, verse 6. Son. When they therefore will come together. After he done walked the earth 40 days, say, hey, they come together. What did he say? They asked of him, saying, Mashiach, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? What did he say? Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? They think that he come, he, hey man, you here. They know he's coming, he's supposed to come and judge and make war, right? They say, you're going to restore the kingdom to who? To Israel? No, to everyone. To Israel. Every nation? To Israel. To Israel. What he's telling. And remember this, y'all, because a lot of people be trying to say, trying to put a time on when is this going to happen. It's going to happen this time, but try to prophesy that it's going to happen at a certain time. What he tell them? Listen. And he said unto them, mm -hmm. it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. That's right. Remember this. Only the Most High knows. That's what he's telling you. The Most High is put it into his power. The times and the seasons when he's going to do this. So let everybody fool you and say it's going to happen at a certain day or this, this time or, or, or another. Only the Most High knows. He didn't even let you know Ain't no way in the world that he's saying that he even know. See? Um, Acts 1 
look at uh, go to Matthew 24. Let's start at verse 21. Matthew chapter 24, verse 21. And then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, never ever, nor ever shall be. That's right, man. It's the time you live with now, Ray. And except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. So you gotta shorten the days, man, so there wouldn't be no flesh saved, man. You got people, all the diseases and all the different problems that people have, and you can see right now. They spray us with the chemtrails, you know, you go to the doctor, you got the vaccines for the children, the children that, you know, it's, it's just bad. They say, if you didn't shorten the days, there'd be no flesh saved. They're trying to depopulate the earth. Instead of increasing the earth and taking care of the people, they're trying to get rid of people. So they went it down to, what, 500 million or something like that? Eight billion. Go ahead. You say you got to shorten this time. Those will be no flesh saved. Read. Really. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. For the elect's sake, one third of the twelve tribes of Israel, those days will be shortened. Read. Really. And if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Hamashiach, and there believe it not. That's right. You say, Hey, here's Hamashiach over here, over there, wherever. He was saying he's the only with us. We the only ones that have a Mashiach Yahweh Shai or Jesus Christ or whatever, Yeshua, or whatever name they use, a Shia or whatever, Yashia, whatever name they use. You ain't with us? Say, believe them not. Read. Really? There shall arise false Mashiachim. Yeah, there's going to arise many false Mashiachim. Read. Really? And false prophets. False prophets, read. Really? And shall show great signs and wonders. Great signs and wonders. Read. Really? And so much that. If it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. So they, they would they would deceive the very elect, man. If it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. But the elect, they hear a Mashiach Shai voice. You know? And they're gonna allow, they ain't gonna follow these wolves, these ravening wolves that's trying to lead them to hell with them. Even though it's like I say, great signs and wonders. They're doing great things. You look at, wow, look at what they do. See, the most side about numbers, when you say you're going to take how many from the city? One. How many? One. How many from a family? Two. Five. That's a lot of that. I mean, he, ain't, he don't need no numbers. How many, how, many, how many people did he need to populate the earth with? Eight. How many people did he need to populate the earth with? Six. From what we're going over, what we just went over. Six, there you go, six. Con, right? Shem, Ham, and Japheth and their wives. It said about Noah had any more sons or daughters, did it? It said Shem, Ham, and Japheth, six people. Look around, man, what we, I just made a number, I think it was about seven billion, eight billion people. Everybody coming from who? After the flood, right? Either or, right? So I say you gotta think about this, you know, it's not something that you just guarantee because you know a little bit of something that you're gonna make it, man. You gotta <laughs> You gotta be about it, man. This is this is serious. You know, you, you, you gotta really be you gotta really look at this sincerely. And because we are people that are coming back to the knowledge and understanding of the Most High and the Mashiach El Shai and who we are and how we got to operate to please Him. And not so much as how we please ourselves. You see, that's the main, the, the, the main problem of a lot of what people have is how they want to please themselves. That's why I say nobody really honored that the Most High could be glorified in the Son. But it starts with who? Who was mentioned first in what I just said? Who was mentioned first in what I just said? 
the most high. So it starts with the most high, whose name is Jealous. He said, I'll kill you. He said, I will melt you. He gonna melt people. He's a consuming fire. Why you think he's bringing fire on the earth? He's bringing himself, man. When you read Isaiah 29 and 6, and then he said, Y'all should be visiting other. Read that. I mean, you gotta hear what he's saying. This is this the most high. You know, you got tornadoes, you got hurricanes, you got earthquakes, you got floods, you got all kind of destruction that the most high tidal waves. Read what it says. Read. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt be visited of the most high of hosts with thunder. With thunder, read. And with earthquakes. And with earthquakes, read. And great noise. And great noise that, that these catastrophes cause. Read. With storms and tempests. With storms and tempests, man. Read. And the flame of devouring fire. And the flame of what? Devouring fire. Devouring fire, man. Fiery fire, man. This ain't no joke, man. This is serious as can be. You gotta take this as serious as the most I tell you. Look at 1 John 3 18. First John 3 and 18. First John chapter 3, verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. That's right. How are we supposed to, how we supposed, how we supposed to, to uh, love? Let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Yeah. In your actions, as you follow the truth, was the Most High Law, Statute, of Commandments. If we read in Psalms 119, 142, you can talk all you want to people to have a good conversation. But it's about deeds, your actions that you're doing once that book is closed. See, we we in this now to learn how to be. Once the book is closed, you understand. So once the book is closed, now we can operate in the spirit, always thinking about. Who's going to please the most high? That he got a mashak of shy be glorified by the Father, first and foremost. So we glorify the most high. And whatever we do, the only way you're going to glorify him is do what? How are we going to glorify the most high? Is do doing what? There it is. <laughs> it ain't hard, right? And being obedient to what he say do, his rules and regulations. And having faith in Omar Shah Yahweh is very important because you're not going to be justified by keeping the laws. Your, your deeds just keeping the laws. The next thing you know, you're a Pharisee. You're, you're looking at everybody, you're judging everybody. You don't give no sign of repentance to nobody. And that's the problem Israel had. Get all this knowledge of the laws and so forth. Now, Mosai gave us mercy and grace. Didn't he just, didn't he just read in Isaiah 14 1? The Mosai will have mercy on who? Jacob and will yet choose who? Israel. Israel, right? And he said, well, before we read that, he said, we'll have mercies on who? Y'all don't know? He don't say he had no mercy on nobody else but Israel. Who else could, what else answer could you give? Where he say he had mercy on Edom? Mercy on Elam. Mercy on Ham. Mercy on uh, Ishmael, Ammon, and Moab, Assyrians, uh, uh, anybody else. <laughs> Y'all see it in the Bible? I don't see it. We just read it. <laughs> we understand this. Get Romans 9.13. Romans chapter 9, verse 13. What? As it is written. It's written? Where? In the Old Testament, in Malachi 1, 1 to 3, what's written? Jacob have I loved. You can go there and look at it. Jacob have I loved, he said, read. 
but Esau have I hated. But Esau have I hated. Read. What shall we say then? What are you saying right there? What you got to say now? What you got to say to the Most High? Read. Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? You going to say the Most High is unrighteous? Read. Most High forbid. Most High forbid. Read. For he said to Moses. This is what he said to Moses. This is why we go all the way back to the first five books of Moses. The first five books, starting with what? Genesis. We was in Genesis. First five books of Moses. What did he say to Moses? I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. That's what the Most High said. Then we even read who we say we'll have mercy on, right? <laughs> who is that? Israel. Huh. Me? Verse 16. So then it is not of him that will it. Because you want it. You want mercy from the Most High. Or you desire. Desire the Most High to have mercy on someone. Read. Nor of him that run it. But of the Most High that showeth mercy. See. It's the Most High that showeth mercy. You see. And that's what we just read about how the Most High can have mercy on who? On Jacob. Go back to, uh, I want to finish this in Matthew 24. He said they're going to shorten the days. He said they're going to do signs and wonders. That is so much that the elect possibly could be fooled. That's why you gotta, you're elect, you're not going to be fooled by a lot of things that you see in this world. That's why you got to know his words. He said, okay, well, he already said it's going to happen. That's why he said in verse 25 of Matthew the 24th chapter, Behold, I have told you before. So I told you. He's talking to us too. That's why we can look at it. It's written for us. So I've told you before. Because are they in the last days now? Is he saying this? Yeah. No. Go ahead. Verse 26. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Go not forth. Don't believe it. They don't if you say he's in the desert. Don't. He's out there in the desert. Don't believe it. Read. <laughs> Behold, he is in the secret chamber. In the secret chamber. Read. Believe it not. Don't believe it. That's what he said. Don't believe it. Read. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That's right. As it comes from the east, it will come from the east to the west, man. Go ahead. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. To so give you a clear sign of certain things. It says, wherever the carcass, what's the carcass? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah. A dead body, kind. Wherever the carcass is, is there shall the, who, what's going to be there? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Eagle, huh? I wonder why he said that. <laughs> there shall the eagles be. I wonder why he said that. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever the dead carcasses is, there shall the eagles be. Hmm. Let's read Obadiah verse 4. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 4. Go thou exalt thyself as the eagle. As the what? As the eagle. Who's he talking about? Verse 1. Vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Most High, power, concerning Edom. Concerning who? Edom. Oh, concerning Edom. So Edom would do what in verse 4? Go thou exalt thyself as the eagle. So who is the Most High going to look upon the sins in the end? Edom. So it says, go thou exalt thyself as what? As the eagle. But it says, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagle be gathered together. Hmm. Esau is what? The end of the world, and Jacob's the beginning of it that followed. He going to visit the iniquity of who? Edom. Edom. And discover who sins? Edom. Edom. Let's speak up. I got. I, oh yeah. Right. I 
can't hear you. They can't, can't hear you. And if they want to hear you on the phone conference too, that's why I'm saying speak up. Okay. See? So, Edom exalted himself as the eagle. What's their symbol? The bald eagle, mm -hmm. right? So, my second, I'm trying to give us clues here because who's the super out of the earth? Edom. Edom. Somebody talk about the Arabs are Edomites. I mean, are the Edomites? Come on. Yo, they're throwing rocks at tanks and, you know what I mean? <laughs> you see what they did? And they went over there to get Saddam Hussein? Now they bombing some other countries. They, they're in war with Syria? Come on, man. Y'all ever seen the people that's been bombed? How they look? They skin falling all over them. Children, they skin just falling off their bodies and just, it's just terrible. Arabs ain't doing that. Y'all seen the Arabs dropping bombs on people? Yeah. Huh? I've never seen Ishmael doing that. They had them rocket launchers from the ground. They were shooting up in the sky. Right? Uh -huh. I ain't seen them. They got, they got planes. I mean, they got jet bombers and all that. They flying over me. Secret weapons and flying saucers and all that. Oh, man. I don't understand how they can come to the conclusion of this. But I really haven't seen the doctrine, so I don't really, I really can't, you know, dissect it one way or another. I just know from what I do know in going into the scriptures and see who is and who isn't. We just read about Hagar, right? She's the mother of Ishmael and Abraham. That's not chosen. The problem is given to who? Isaac. So I don't know what it is. I mean, it's always something to detour your mind away from the truth. Some of, that's why I got all these doctrines out here. It's, 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 it's not good, man, because then people are listening over here, listening over there, and they don't have the foundations well enough to be able to justify themselves and what they do believe in. You see what I'm saying? And it's very important that you have a foundation to know what you know, and you know what you know through the precepts. Don't give me the one line and then you say that's just see there, see what it says right there? And not have understanding of a whole lesson that you gotta go into for that one verse. You understand? To get the understanding. You can it can be done. You see what I'm saying? So you really get total understanding, man. I mean I haven't heard it, so maybe some of y'all have, maybe it can uh, send it to you or whatever. I can uh, review it, you know. I like to know how people think, you know what I mean? It's like not necessarily going back and forth, but just to know how they think. You see how people are still being led astray. That's being led astray right there, to me. But let's go back to, uh, so it's just gonna be the, uh, the eagles represent the uh, Ishmaelites, <laughs> the Arabs? <laughs> I don't think so. You understand what I'm saying? So, verse 29, Matthew 24, 24, 29. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened. And the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. You hear what he's saying? It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be dark. That's a lot of destruction, man. And you can't see the moon. Like you couldn't see the like say like if it if when it happened like almost time for evening, when the twin towers came down, all that smoke was all up in the air. You couldn't see no sun, you couldn't see nothing but what you see? Dust. Dust. You ain't gonna see no sun, you will see no moon. Destruction that's gonna come on this earth. That's promised, read. And the stars shall fall from heaven. They ain't talking about no stars up in the sky. That's not talking about the, the ordinances that the most High put in the sky. It's not talking about that. Uh, go to Ecclesiastes in the Apocrypha and Verse uh, chapter 43. And let's read look at that verse uh, 9. Let's see if they're gonna fall from heaven, from the sky. Let's read. Please yeah, Ezekiel chapter 43, verse 9. Mm -hmm. The beauty of heaven, the glory of the stars, and 
ornament and giving light in the highest places of the most high. So we're talking about the stars, they say the stars gonna fall from heaven. Stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. But let's read. We're talking about the stars, read. Verse 10. At the commandment of the Holy One, they will stand in their order. At the commandment of the Most High, they're gonna stand in their order, read. And never faint in their watching. And never faint in their watching, meaning they never gonna fall from the sky. That's what that means. So now, these stars are talking about the superpowers of the earth. These movie stars, celebrities, and so forth, gonna be, be put, to, put to death. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Powers and authority in these heavens, in the, in the sky, everybody that's, that's got power in the sky, the stealth bombers or whatever they have, flying saucers, because you know Hitler has flying saucers. So they got flying saucers. So when you see flying saucers, they ain't necessarily in the right hand. It could be from the left hand too. It's gonna be a galactical battle. It's gotta, he gotta make it so that everybody gonna plead to us. You hear what they're gonna plead to us? Why? But it'll tell you how you're gonna destroy the army, the navy, the marines, and the air force of every nation. All these kingdoms are set up right on this earth. That's why they're gonna have to cleave to us. Because they don't realize well, these are the children of Israel. These are the chosen people of the most high. They don't recognize it. They don't have no choice but to recognize it. Praise the most high. see this tribulation going on it's got to be like never before ever seen because they're going to be cleaving to us they're going to get a Zechariah 8 chapter and verse 23 Chapter 8, verse 23. Hmm. Thus saith the Most High of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass, that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations. See? Remember, he scattered, he made all of these, remember, he made all these different languages of these, these nations that they have now in the tower, during the Tower of Babel. That's what you're talking about, all these different nations outside of the 12 tribes of Israel that have these different languages, right? Really. Even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew. They're going to take hold of him or the skirt of him that is a Jew. Our robes and so forth. Me? Saying, we will go with you. For we have heard that the Most High is with you. So we're going to go with you. That we have heard that the Most High is with you. That's why I say what they're going to do. They're going to be cleaving to the house of Israel. And don't get it twisted why I say him that is a Jew. Because get a, I think Isaiah 48 and 1. Isaiah 48 and 1. Because Jew is short for Judah. Read that. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 1. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob, mm -hmm. which are called by the name of Israel. Mm -hmm. And I'll come forth out of the waters of Judah. See, so I'll come forth out of the waters of Judah. Read it from the top. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob. O house of Jacob, family of Jacob, who are who? The twelve tribes of Israel. Read. Which are called by the name of Israel. Which are called by the name of Israel. That's who we are. We're called by the name of Israel. The Israelites. Read. And I'll come forth out of the waters of Judah. Out of the waters of Judah. So we all come forth out of the waters of Judah. You understand? So I say it's he that is a Jew. They're gonna be grabbing hold to him that is a Jew. But we all come from the forth out of the waters of Judah. But we dip, we twelve different nations that make up one nation. You understand? 
Now, let's go back to uh, what was that in Matthew 24. Finish that up. Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. See? Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. The Mashiach that was shy, right? Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. All the tribes of the earth go mourn. Revelation 1 and 7. So don't, he already said, they say, oh, Lord, but he's over there, he's over here. My shake up shine only with us. They don't believe it. Because remember, we scattered among all nations. So, in other words, who is it that can say that they've been to all nations and all these people believing in them? They don't.